Hello, my beautiful friends. It is September 18th. And we're doing a early fall tour of the garden. Now I have to be honest, it's a hot mess out here. I have not had enough time. As you can see, the sunflowers are basically ghosts of themselves at this point, but there's so much lively life here. I decided to come out and film. Um, sedum looking magnificent, the roses the strawberries devouring everything in their path who knew right um, I don't know if you can see this but we have a nest of uh, um, yellow jackets yeah you can't see it but they're zooming in and out here and they've completely displaced their their nest has completely displaced this uh, wall which is fascinating to see but um, it's okay. I, every time I walk by, I just think peaceful thoughts and they have not bothered me. So um, we have some mullion here and I just cleaned out these beds. I need to get these beds planted and ready for our fall crops. The asparagus going to town, looking really good. The sage, magnificent, the thyme as well. I did not have a good crop of amaranth this year. I did have an, have an excellent crop, as you know, if you've watched any of the other videos of milkweed, which I still have quite a few left here, but I've cut quite a few down. The first year that I've not had a quantity of nasturtiums, but there's some. Um, yeah, and so we've got some flocks. We've got the nettle. The nettle went crazy. This beautiful plant that came from my father's garden, my late father, um, Cleome. Say hello to Esmeralda. She is currently being known as the boo-boo chicken. There's a big long story there, but other chickens, I don't know if you knew this about chickens, but chickens will kill each other if they find out that one is injured or weak. And so they realized that she was weak and they they were ganging up on her and, and um, so we've been keeping her back here in the garden and literally she's living in a box on the porch at the moment. But anyways, <laughs> I'll tell you more about that story. If you're interested, just let me know. Beautiful black eyed Susans and one of those ever bearing roses. Look at these tomatoes still coming on. I have got to save these seeds. Magnificent. Elder the elder flower, um, now elderberry, the birds have eaten it all. I, I just didn't get any of it. That's okay. I'm happy to feed the, the wildlife. I still have some tinctures and tonics from last year. All right, let's see what else. Oh, wow, check this out. This is all blackberry that's just really taking off. I brought one plant home from my dad's garden right before he died, a couple years before he died. And, um, it's doing really well in this little fig. This poor little fig. All my figs were winter killed and like went all the way dip back to the ground. But that one is coming back really well. And because it's behind the fence, the deer have not been gnawing on it. All right. So through the maze, a few of the Chinese long beans still hanging out. We're going to save these for seed. We have so many beans that were not consumed this year. Here's chard that I also haven't consumed but I'm going to cut back and I'll probably get a fall crop from the most magnificent, ignore all the other trash in the background, but uh, look at these beautiful impatience. That's in a, like a, a, just a wash tub, a metal wash tub. Another elder, this apple, which needs to earn her place in the garden because she has not had any apples. Everbearing strawberries, highly recommend. They do actually ever bear. Got a bunch of valerian coming up here. Um, a little bit of borage. Next year's uh, mullion, calendula, nasturtium. Random zinnias. Uh, bring me as many zinnias as you can, universe. I love them all. Look at these zinnias. They are just so beloved, so beautiful. You have to deadhead them. You have to make sure you're trimming them back totally worth it. 
cucumbers at their last gasp. I just found a new type of cucumber. This is a Boston cucumbers. I got them at Baker Creek. Amazing, tiny, beautiful. Oh, there's one. They're just tiny and beautiful, perfect for pickling. And um, yeah, beets and carrots, a couple random apples on this tree, but at least there's a couple, right? This is actually one zinnia plant. <laughs> I planted so many zinnia seeds, but only one proliferated. And then here's one of my many basil plants. I stick basil everywhere because you can never have too much basil, right? A little sedum, the sedum, look at the sedum. The bounty of the sedum of God to find a better plan to support the sedum next year. The fennel, which I better cut back before it makes fennel babies all over the garden. Beans growing through the apple tree, a bunch of tomatoes, a gorgeous lavender, a gorgeous dandelion. You know, I like to pull the dandelions back. Actually, this here's one of our centuries. This is a, um, a motion activated water sprayer. This is what's protecting the garden right now from um, the myriad raccoons that get in. It's such a big garden and we're such a rural area but this water sprayer, man, it's the bomb. Amazing zinnias, all the tomatoes, peppers, a lot more basil. I still have not had a great pepper year, which is I'm kind of bummed about. My neighbor makes this thing called cowboy candy where she pickles like the jalapenos in sugar. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Look at the sedum. This is Tulsi basil mixed in with calendula. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's a lot of awesome here. And then down here, we have more basil, peppers, the tallest sunflower. Look at her. She was incredible. You know, um, a couple years ago, it was the amaranth. It got some kind of rust. It should not look like this. Um, a couple years ago, my sweetheart, who is now my husband, read this thing about like how after um, Halloween and uh, Samhain, that you should not harvest anything from the garden, you leave it to nature. And so even though part of me wants to clean up a lot of this stuff, I'm just letting it go. I'm letting some of it go because it will continue to nourish all the plants, all the, you know, birds and the bees, as they say. This is the compost pile, weaning. Here's a greenhouse, absolutely nothing in it right now except for this poor struggling parsley that I've been trying to continue to uh, take care of, but I'll be getting it planted up real soon. The walking Egyptian walking onions, incredible. Oh gosh, it's so exciting, look, I. I thought this was something and I let it grow and it's, it's an aster. It's a wild aster. It's just good news for me because sometimes when I let things grow or go, because I think there's something, they turn out to be noxious weeds, <laughs> but isn't that just like life, right? I mean, that's why I just find this incredible power in the garden and being a gardener because that's how you build a life, right? It's just like you build a garden. You find things and you think, wow, that's something. And then you realize, nope, no, it's not. <laughs> and maybe every year you pull up something and you think it's nothing. And then wait, you realize that, that thing has value. It's important. It's either beautiful or tasty or both. Maybe even just useful. So, I don't know. I hope this inspires you. I hope this makes you realize no matter how messy the garden is. It's still beautiful and productive. That weeding the garden is important, but just the commitment to opening up the space is what it's really about. And when you do that, all kinds of magic flows in. So remember that. Namaste, my friends. Bye.